efforts for debt relief in the wake of COVID-19 pandemic. The understanding reached during a joint press conference by Prime Minister Imran Khan and his Sri Lankan counterpart Mahinda Rajapaksa in Colombo after one-on-one -on -one and delegation-level talks. Speaking on the occasion, Prime Minister Imran Khan said he directed the members of delegation to find means and ways to enhance trade and connectivity through CPEC that will help Sri Lanka to establish trading ties with Central Asia. We have discussed other areas where we can uh, enhance our trading ties. Pakistan suffered 10 years of, uh, of the worst kind of terrorism where we lost 70,000 people. Sri Lanka for 30 years combated terrorism. Pakistan played its part in helping Sri Lanka to uh, resolve this problem. He said the enhanced trading ties will bring both the countries together. He said the developed countries must help developing countries to get debt relief as they have suffered the most due to COVID-19 pandemic. The Prime Minister stated that the pandemic exposed huge inequality in the world and called upon international bodies to step in to support poor countries. He invited Sri Lankan Prime Minister Rajapaksa to visit Pakistan as the country offered the biggest Buddhist heritage in the world. Prime Minister Imran Khan said Pakistan is planning to initiate projects to facilitate the pilgrimage at Buddhist holy sites. Sri Lankan Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa said they agreed to enhance cooperation in different sectors including economy, trade, investment, technology, defense and education. The Sri Lankan Prime Minister said the talks focused on important regional and international issues including impact of COVID-19 pandemic. Prime Minister Rajapaksa said they also agreed to pursue the framework of Pakistan-Sri Lanka free trade agreement. Pakistan and Sri Lanka have signed five memoranda of understanding for cooperation in different sectors including science and technology, health, education and industry. The memoranda were signed in a ceremony held in Colombo and witnessed by Prime Minister Imran Khan and his Sri Lankan counterpart Mahinda Rajapaksa. The memoranda were signed between boards of investment of Pakistan and Sri Lanka. Prime Minister Imran Khan held one-on-one -on -one and delegation-level meetings with his Sri Lankan counterpart Mahinda Rajapaksa and his delegation in Colombo. The two sides discussed bilateral relations and regional situation. They also discussed bilateral cooperation in different sectors including education, health, trade and agriculture. Uh, now we have with us online Fahim Sardar, who's an economist, who will be discussing um, this particular visit and its significance with us. Thank you for joining us, Fahim, online. Thank you. Um, what I'd like to ask you now is that um, the, the historical significance of Pakistan and Sri Lanka's relations now, the Prime Minister uh, said in his uh, speech that um, Pakistan has helped Sri Lanka in combating terrorism. Uh, your uh, views on this, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, of course, Pakistan went a long way in a very, in a very deep and very impactful way in helping Sri Lanka deal with, with a very with a, a, a cancerous problem that was killing Sri Lankans left, right, and center. And Pakistan has been instrumental in bringing peace to that part of the region. And as you can clearly see, the the warmth that Pakistan receives from Sri Lanka, there's a reason for it, and the warmth we want to give them there's a reason for it and that's a, that's a bilateral understanding and co cooperative nature that we both possess for each other um, in the region both countries are trying to bring peace harmony and increase trade and we have to understand that if there is going to be violence there's going to be no trade and pakistan is a perfect example of that and i've written about this as well that you have to curtail violence you cannot allow violence there has to be zero tolerance regarding violence that is the only way for a country to grow and to be able to think in which direction they're supposed to go. Coming back to Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka was in a lot of trouble. And Pakistan made sure that it stepped forward and, and had pulled out all those problems from their roots, not just from the, the branches. So as a result, Sri Lanka is now stable, and Pakistan and Sri Lanka are hopefully going to be moving together forward into the future. Right. Um, and do you think in this visit uh, the topic of Islamophobia might come up as well because there have been some issues with that regarding cremation and all going on uh, in Sri Lanka and that's against Muslim beliefs. So do you think, uh, and Prime Minister Imran Khan has been very vocal about uh, Islamophobia at, at every forum. I think uh, even our Honorable uh, President along with the Honorable Prime Minister both have been quite vocal and very uh, unequivocal of uh, how they feel and how they how uh, the Pakistanis feel about all of this. When it comes to Sri Lanka, I think for the, the rights of the Muslims will eventually in a very diplomatic way come up. 
but it will come up at some point because Pakistan has done that at the United Nations. So, I mean, the United Nations concerns the whole world. So here we have Pakistan talking to one country, uh, a friendly country, so of course it's going to come up in, in, in a very polite way. And just to uh, make it a two-way street, I think uh, our Prime Minister has been unequivocal, categorical about the Buddhist heritage that Pakistan possesses, which is the biggest on earth. And I mean, uh, would that not appeal to the Buddhists living in not only Sri Lanka, but China, Thailand, Canada, and America, and throughout the world? So Pakistan is is a multi is a pluralistic country and it expects other countries to be pluralistic as well. There are issues everywhere, there are problems everywhere, but that but we are driving forward our rights in a respectful manner and trying to give others their rights in a respectful manner as well. Right, absolutely. Now, uh, also uh, the topic that comes up is how both the countries being developing countries uh, have been hit by COVID-19. The economies have been hit very hard. Mm. So uh, how sure. can they work together in increasing their ties, bilateral ties, in order to overcome this effect that COVID-19 has had on both the countries' economies? COVID has had a, uh, uh, I keep, I've said this on multiple forums and many TV programs that COVID was, uh, the, the main thrust of COVID was for the first three months from uh, April, May and June, but the effect of those three months was equal to a world war, mm -hmm. economically, socially, and you know, I'll focus on economics right now. So right now, Pakistan has come out of COVID in a much stronger uh, manner as was earlier expected. Sri Lanka has had its issues. Every country has had its issues. So focusing only on Pakistan and Sri Lanka, Basically, it is in both interest, both countries' interests, that we increase our trade with each other. And if you notice the MOUs that have been signed, technology, trade, other, other things which, and then you've got military down at number three or number four, you, you can see that both countries are trying to get together closer. What happens is that if you have peace in the region, like the moment the Red Bull Facade started, our economy started to stabilize and improve. Likewise, when, when uh, Sri Lanka stabilized, its economy started to improve. But that's step one. Countries have to trade with each other, and they, can, they have to trade on their strengths. Likewise, it is advisable to trade within the region rather than trading far off. So Pakistan and Sri Lanka are not far off, so it's advisable for both countries to start trading with each other in things that they are perhaps, you know, uh, they don't have a comparative advantage. That is going to save both countries a lot of foreign exchange and build up their reserves as well as their value. If countries are just going to trade with the, with the typical uh, profile that we see uh, in, in some countries, even Pakistan, is, uh, Pakistan has that profile which we're trying to change. So you end up getting stuck in the same kind of problems. If we can, for example, trade in each other's currencies, I'm just giving one example, that would be a huge boost to both countries because we would then become less dependent on a third currency. That's just one example. So imagine if we start trading more in things that way we can help each other. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, definitely. And at the moment, the trade ties, as you were also mentioning, are very limited. They're about 359 million in bilateral trade in the last fiscal year. Mm -hmm. um, so which are the areas where this can actually be enhanced, other than you know, uh, trading in each other's currencies, which you just said? Um, what are the other sectors? I mean, they, they will be uh, talking in delegation level talks on uh, many different areas, but where do you think is the strongest sort of point where the two countries can come together? I think there are many points, not just uh, a couple or, or one alone. Um, for example, Pakistan here is doing very well in services. We have to increase our service footprint in Sri Lanka. Our IT, our banking, our financial markets, all of them can be taken to Sri Lanka. Um, take, for instance, our trade in slightly advanced mechanized uh, equipments. We, Pakistan is becoming a uh, a tech country. When I say tech, I'm not talking about IT, I'm talking about machinery. Pakistan has started building aircraft, we're going to sell them jets. So uh, there, there are many things that we can do, and tourism is just one of those things. And believe me, tourism is going to be a big ticket item because once Pakistan starts opening up its doors to the Buddhists and to you know, and all the other tourists who just want to come and see the other side of Pakistan. It's going to be uh, quite helpful for uh, all countries, especially Pakistan and Sri Lanka. 
what I'm what I want to stress here is that it is extremely important for two countries to give each other some kind of increased importance that helps preserve value and that helps increase their reserves in both countries and both countries uh, need to do this very quickly because we're coming out of a COVID situation. Right. Also, um, uh, Pakistan and Sri Lanka have also had uh, pretty strong um, uh, military uh, ties as well in the past, specifically when we were talking about combating terrorism. So, uh, your mm -hmm. views on that, please. Uh, Pakistan is a very powerful country, and we should be proud of that. And Pakistan is, is the only country that has won a fourth generation war. We should be proud of it. Unfortunately, we lost too many people and it was brought upon us and we won so we let's let's celebrate that for a minute kudos to all the people who fought and and you know salam and respect to all those who lost their lives um we have to uh, be able to project our abilities our security abilities which uh, frankly speaking you you started this whole conversation from that point sri lanka understands our security capacity our strength and our ability to resolve a problem. So if you've got a strong military and good military ties, then you can build upon that. And you know, uh, once again, to drag economics into this, we have to remember high-tech military equipment is typically uh, a good, uh, it's a big ticket item when it comes to international trade. So Pakistan has a lot to sell to Sri Lanka. And by the way, our economy is almost uh, three times their size or possibly more. So uh, there's a lot that we have to offer them. Right, and uh, also Sri Lanka has a very robust tourism industry. You hear about people visiting there all the time. How can Pakistan learn from Sri Lanka about how they've boosted their tourism industry? I think we already are, and we already were learning, and it's just that we just started to open up because now things have become secure in Pakistan. Earlier that we had issues, we had enhanced interference from other countries. Um, in Sri Lanka, you will notice that um, wherever there's peace, there is tourism. So what you have, what any country has to do is provide logistical access to that place. Logistics. It's about logistics. If, uh, starting off in a very layman term, if you can provide logistics, you can take a tourist any place, you know, whether it's the center of a desert or it's the center of a rainforest or whether it's uh, top, on top of a mountain. Uh, we we can see how the world flocks to uh, Sri Lanka for its beaches, for its forests, and for its culture. So they will flock to Pakistan as well. But we have to, and we have to work hard on this. We have to project the right, the true Pakistan, not the Pakistan that our enemies are trying to project and have been projecting for the past 17 years. So we have to be a little more aggressive in, in projecting our real face, which is the face of plur plurality. We opened up Kartarpur, and look what we got in return. Our, our mosques have been destroyed in India. So here we're trying to open up to the world. We're trying to open up to the Sikhs. We're trying to open up to the Buddhists. We're trying to open up to our other Muslim brothers. And um, that itself is just a stepping stone. I, I just want to repeat that. If we can provide logistical access to whichever places we want uh, traffic in, that's usually the starting point. Right, and uh, the Prime Minister also invited uh, the Sri Lankan uh, Prime Minister Rajapaksa to visit Pakistan due to its very large Buddhist uh, heritage that we've got over there. Do you see that uh, trip happening any time in the future? Um, I think it might not be too far into the future. I mean, here I'm just guessing it's my, it's my professional assessment because actually um, Sri Lanka also has a lot to gain from Pakistan and it of course goes beyond tourism. And uh, regional stability, geoeconomics, uh, uh, laced with geopolitics, those are the main things. Um, Pakistan and Sri Lanka have far bigger uh, interests that, that need to be firmed up, perhaps. And that, may, that will not happen if, if they're not going to meet each other. So if he comes within the next six months, I, sh I would not be surprised at all. Right, and I think that uh, we don't um, uh, project uh, the vast amount of Buddhist uh, pr uh, presence, uh, the heritage that you have in, in, in our country, because you have Texala, which is uh, one of the oldest universities in the world. I mean, this is so significant, and there's so many other sites like that, sure. which are so special to people, not just of Sri Lanka, but of uh, many other Buddhist countries. 
Pakistan is opening up and we are talk we have started talking about uh, the Buddhist culture that Pakistan enjoys. We have recently created a Buddhist trail which is going to be advertised to the whole world that there's going to be a, it's like a like a dedicated trail starting from one side of a province going to the other other province where people will get to see the Buddhist heritage not just the Buddhist not only Buddhists can come and see it but I think I'd go myself and see it because um, to be honest, I mean, uh, we haven't ourselves taken too much interest in, in the diversity that our country enjoys. Um, how many of us go to Taxila, which is right next to uh, Islamabad, to, to see the ancient sites? And um, unfortunately, not many of us, but uh, we're starting this thing off. And to, to, to tell a Buddhist country that we're, we're opening up the Buddhist sites for you, uh, that, that, that means a lot. And the way we opened up the Sikh sites, to the Sikhs. So Pakistan is opening up because this is the true Pakistan, a pluralistic country that focuses on trade, economics and regional harmony. Right, absolutely. Thank you so much, Fahim Sadar, for joining